If you look up into the sky, most of the time you see clouds. They might be thin and wispy, large and fluffy, or dark and stormy. When I was a kid, I really wanted to know what would happen if I flew up in an airplane and then got out and landed on a cloud. Would I be able to sit on the cloud? Could someone actually live on a cloud? Today we are going to dive in and learn all about clouds, how they form, what they're made of, why some of them rain and some of them don't, and if you could, in fact, live on one. I'm Science Mom. I'm Math Dad. Join us to learn all about clouds. Good morning! Today in Nevada, it is very cloudy, which is very exciting for us because we live near Las Vegas, Nevada. That is the location that does not get clouds very often. Mm -mm. We but even got some rain last night. We did. But according to several of the people who were in our class who were chatting before class started, most of them have cloudy weather too. And mm -hmm. it turns out, if you look at the entire surface of our world, at any given moment, about 70% of it is covered in clouds. Well, that's more than half. That's almost three fourths. That's a lot of clouds. And when I was a kid and I looked up at clouds, especially big, beautiful, fluffy clouds like this, I really wondered, would it be possible to go up and be on top of a cloud? Wow. And Remington answered it before class even started and said, no, you would sink right through because you are heavier than a cloud. And this is true, but to understand what clouds are and how they form, we are going to start off our day with doing three cool experiments. Ooh. You ready okay. for this one? I like experiments. Okay, so for our first experiment, Math Dad, we are going to get a container of water and we're going to put some shaving cream up on top. So I have my container of water here. Wait, is the shaving cream like the cloud on top? So the shaving cream is and is not like a cloud. Clouds are not made out of shaving cream. No matter <laughs> how white and fluffy they look. Well, I can't get the lid off. There we go. You gotta get the right brand of shaving cream, mom. <laughs> Science mom. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're going to fill this up with shaving cream. <gasps> no messes. And the question I have for you is what type of things could we drop in where they would sink through and what type of things would float? Well, so I, if I have a little tiny piece of paper and I stick it on top of here, is it going to fall through into the water? No, a piece of paper will not fall through shaving cream. What about a marble? A marble will fall through shaving marble cream. Marble definitely would. What about water? Water, if you had lots of water, yes. A little water, no. So here's what we're going to try, Math Dad. Here is our experiment. Uh -oh. It's looking at the density of water versus shaving cream. So I'm going to scoop off um, <laughs> scoop off some of that shaving cream so we have a flat surface here. And then it's time for yellow versus blue. You've got blue. Okay. I've got yellow. And let's switch our camera view so that they can see this just a little bit closer. Okay. Oh, scoop back just a bit. There we go. And we're going to see... Who gets through first? So more drops should be faster. So I did seven drops right there, and then one there, and one here. Oh. And now if we give it just a moment, we should see this drop of water make it through the shaving cream, cream and into the water. And it looks like Team Blue was first. There we go. We've got this. Kind of sink over to the edge. It did kind of sink over to the edge. You can see some blue coming through but I'm not giving up on yellow. Yellow is going to make it through too. Team blue. I don't know. Maybe, maybe water doesn't go through shaving cream unless it goes around the edge. No, it'll make it through, but you've got to be patient. This takes just a few minutes before it works. So a little bit of patience is required, but it will make it through. All right. Maybe and yellow is just not as good as blue. Wait, wait, are the particles different sizes between the yellow and blue food color? Yes, although off the top of my head, I don't know which particle is bigger and that shouldn't make too big of a difference. What's really happening is that that water together is slowly making its way down through the shaving cream. And then when it hits the water, it will spill out into the water. But this is yeah. taking just a little bit longer yeah. than I anticipated. We can come back to it if you think it's just taking its 
precious time. It is. I, I guess our, our food coloring has they they have their their heads up in the clouds, right? <laughs> they're they're not paying attention. I see what you did there. Our second experiment is quite a bit more exciting. And in our second experiment, we are going to make an actual cloud using water because it turns out that clouds are made out of water. That's what clouds are made of. Are they made of dust? Uh, dust particles sometimes help with cloud formation. But no, clouds are not made out of dust. They're not made out of shaving cream. They are made out of water. Okay. So you seem skeptical, Math Dad, and so I, I'm I, going I, to prove it to you. So like when you boil water, you're making a cloud. When you boil water, you are taking water that is liquid and turning it into a gas. Yes. And it turns out that water that is in clouds is actually water droplets. It is liquid water in really tiny, tiny pieces. And for liquid water to form and to condense from a gas into liquid droplets, you need to reduce the temperature. It needs to be a little cooler for that to happen. And we are going to make some hot water get cold using liquid nitrogen, and this will make a cloud. Ooh, okay, this sounds cool. So here's- I like, I like liquid nitrogen. Here's how we're gonna do this. But So let's go ahead and- Are we gonna do this indoors? We are gonna do this indoors, but don't worry, Math Dad, we're going to use just a tiny, tiny bit of water. Okay, I have a towel here to protect the equipment. <laughs> because I don't trust science mom here. Okay. <laughs> so first, we are going to pour in just a little bit of liquid nitrogen. We'll get this container about half full. I appreciate the towel to protect the computer's math data. That is a good idea. Uh oh, there's nothing in there. Oh. Whoa, it's making a cloud, all right. There we go. So we have our liquid nitrogen. And now I'm gonna put on some gloves and I'm going to put on a little face shield so that I don't get too wet. Do you have a good view, Math Dad? I can see it, I'm all seeing right. it all. All right, are they gonna be able to see up to about right here? Yep. Excellent, because now is the fun part. Now we're gonna take about a half cup of hot water and we're going to put it into this liquid nitrogen. So this water in this thermos is not quite boiling, but it's pretty warm. And watch what happens when we slowly dump it in. Oh, was that slow? <laughs> I, it was somewhat slow, but the, <laughs> cloud, but the cloud was fast. The cloud formed really quickly. Oh my goodness. And it's still happening. Is uh, it's, what, okay, so what's what's going on here, Science Mom? So what's going on, let's go back to our, our main view here. What's going on with this cloud are two things. And the main thing is that we had water that was very hot and it cooled down really quickly. The other thing that happened is that liquid nitrogen wants to turn into a gas. When it's liquid, it is several hundred degrees below zero. And so it's boiling and turning into a gas. And when we dumped hot water into it, it turned into a gas much faster. Now I have a video that I wanna show real fast that shows me doing this on a much bigger scale. So let's pull up a video real quick, real quick not real quack, and you guys can see this on a much bigger scale. And now we'll do it in slow motion. So this was a couple years ago at a, a city event that I did near Las Vegas. And I just took about a half a pan of hot water and poured it into a bowl of liquid nitrogen and it made a cloud that big. And all that white that you're seeing, that's all water vapor that then condensed into water droplets. And that's what clouds are. They are water droplets. Okay, so you've said this a couple times already, but just to be clear, when you say water droplet, you're talking about liquid water? Liquid water, yes. So, so clouds are not made of air and gas? No, clouds are made of liquid water, and I'm going to prove it to you with our third experiment. Now, when I say clouds are made of liquid water, I know that a lot of kids watching are going to say, that doesn't make sense, because shouldn't liquid water just fall out of the sky? Yeah, exactly. Well, shouldn't my yellow food coloring have just fallen straight through? Got not caught. quite yet, not quite yet. 
the shaving cream is almost as thick as water. So it takes time for this food coloring to fall through. And water droplets are so small that just a little bit of air currents can push them up and keep them floating in the air. Now for our second, our third and final experiment. All right. We want safety goggles. <gasps> so put on your safety goggles, Math Dad. All right. And can you grab me those blue ones right over there? Because we are going to pressurize a water bottle slightly. We have a cork on top and this one only has water. So with just water in here, if we add a little bit of pressure, will we be able to form a cloud? Let's find out. Here I have a cork. No, why, why, why would that make a cloud? Here, because once we remove the pressure, then the temperature is gonna drop and that should make the water condense. Okay. So I'm pumping in water, getting this bottle pressurized. And then let's go ahead and just push off. We pushed off and apologies, I know that was kind of loud. Pushed off the cork. I don't mm. see too much of a cloud. Nope. So let's try, no let's try a bottle that has a little bit of water and a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And rubbing alcohol is a molecule that has a few carbons and some oxygens and it's very small. And that means it goes into the air or evaporates pretty easily. That's why it has such a strong smell. This almost has a bluish smell. tinge. Did you put food coloring in? There was a little leftover food coloring in from right. when I did this um, before. All right. Now, same thing we did before. We are going to add a little bit of pressure. Go ahead and pop off the top. <gasps> This time we got a cloud. What? And you can see, I can almost push out some of that cloud by squeezing on it. No. -uh. And it's starting to get a little fainter. Huh. All right, now it's starting to get a little more faint. It is not quite as obvious. And the reason why we got a cloud is because when the cork popped out, the temperature dropped. And when the temperature dropped, the water condensed. It's the same thing that happens if you Wait, wait, if you live somewhere where it's humid and you have a glass of cold water with ice in it, you will see little droplets of water around the outside of the glass. And they're forming around the glass because that glass is super cold. And when the water gets cold, then that air can't hold as much water and water starts to condense. Okay, this didn't change temperature. This was just in my hand the whole time. It changed temperature because the pressure changed. Pressure and temperature are super tightly related. And if our temperature, drops, the pressure will drop. If the pressure drops, the temperature drops. No way. So when we're pushing more air into this, we are making the pressure rise. We're also increasing the temperature just a little bit. And that makes our cloud disappear. Did you see how yeah. there was still a little faint cloud and it disappeared? No, that's pretty cool. Let's do this one more time. And what we're gonna do this time, as soon as we pop off the cork, we're gonna put it back on and repressurize it. You ready, Math Dad? I'm ready. All right, pop off that cork, pressure drops, temperature drops. Now put Whoa. the cork back on. Okay. And as soon as we add more pressure, the temperature increases and we make those droplets go back to being a gas. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's pretty cool. This is pretty much exactly what is happening when you see clouds form only on a much bigger and not as much difference in, in pressure <laughs> scale. <laughs> No rubbing alcohol required. Although small little particles of dust in the atmosphere are important for cloud formation. You do get more droplets forming when you have tiny little particles of dust, but it has to be the right amount, not too much, not too little. That's cool. So actually a, kind of a fun fact there, science mom, I was reading about this. If you get too much dust, then the water droplets are won't get big enough to fall and that can cause a drought. So something like the Sierra Desert. The Sahara Desert? Sahara, <clears throat> Sahara Desert, where you've got all that desert and lots of sand getting blown up in the air, lots of dust, then they don't get as much rain because there's so much dust, but then there's more dust because they don't get much rain. It's true, it can be a cycle of desertification, and that's that's kind of a, a bad thing when that starts to happen because then mm. we, we can't live there if it gets too dry. Yeah. But certain, 
um, certain uh, dust particles are important. And fortunately for us, our atmosphere always does have some dust particles and that helps with cloud formation. So you said about 70% of the earth is covered with clouds at most times. Yes. Isn't that about the amount of water covering the earth too? Like 70% of the earth's surface is covered with it, it water is. of some sort? So we, we see that ratio quite a huh. few times. And there are rainstorms and thunderstorms happening all over the world at any given moment too. We always have rain falling, which is kind of neat. Now back to clouds. I told you that they're made of water droplets and that's why we can see them. This bottle right here, it's humid inside this bottle. And if I shake it around, I might have humidity of 100%. It might be have just as much water vapor as a gas as it can hold. And it will be clear. I can see through it if it's humid. But if it's a cloud inside this bottle, then I can't see through it anymore because there are tiny little water droplets of liquid water and they change the way that the light goes through the cloud. You can't see gaseous water, water vapor, but you can, you can see, see the, uh, liquid water oh, when it's those that. little droplets. If we took one of those water droplets that makes a cloud and we blew it up so it was bigger, and let's say we blew it up so that it was this big. See that blue dot that I drew on my thumb? If a water droplet that makes up a cloud is this big, then how big do you think a raindrop is? Probably like that big, maybe, I don't know. This big. What? This is how big a raindrop is compared to a water droplet. So you can see why raindrops fall from clouds, but the actual cloud that's made up of these water droplets doesn't because those are so small. So there's light as air, essentially. Just about, a tiny little breeze can keep them floating. <laughs> wow. Okay, clouds are pretty cool. Clouds are pretty cool. Before we check on the notes and have our world mystery, I want to talk about different types of clouds because there are names for different types of clouds and some clouds produce rain and sometimes some clouds don't. It's nice to know the difference. Okay. And if we know just three or four Latin words, we can learn a lot about which types of clouds are which. The first word we have is cirrus or cirrus. Cirrus clouds are thin and wispy and they almost always happen at a really high elevation, way up high in the sky and they are not going to form rain because of how high they are and because all of those little particles are actually frozen. So this little water droplet isn't liquid water, it's actually a crystal of water, it's ice. Cirrus clouds sometimes have really thin wispy shapes that are super long. Other times they look a more, little more scattered like this. Second type of cloud that you want to know is stratus. And mm. this is the same as fog. Oh. So fog is really a type of cloud. It's just based on its location. When fog is at ground level, a stratus cloud is at ground level, we call it fog. When fog is up above, we call it a stratus cloud. But that, that's that's kind of cool. A stratus cloud and fog are really the same so that thing. Stratus would be like in the stratosphere. No, no. Stratus means layer and fog really is just a cloud at ground level. So if you've ever wondered what is it like to be in a cloud? Well, this is what it's like. It's like being in a foggy day, a foggy weather day. <laughs> so, kind of a fun fact here in Nevada, we don't get clouds very often. We don't get fog. Well, we have clouds, but yeah. we have a lot of blue sky too, yeah. and we hardly ever have clouds on the ground. That's right. Our, our kids didn't know what to think of it when we had a foggy day a few years ago, and they were just wondering, running around, wow, what is this? But I bet some of you live in a place where you see fog all the time. Yeah, especially if you live by the coast, um, by the ocean, we definitely see more, more fog. Um, the other type of cloud that you want to know is a cumulus cloud. Cumulus comes from the Latin word for heap, or pile, and you can see that these are big and fluffy. Ooh, it looks nice and soft. They do look nice and soft, but Hello. that a cumulus cloud is actually the cloud that I would least like to go inside. Going inside a nimbus cloud would be cool. It would be just like being in fog. Going inside- uh, A stratus. A stratus cloud, yes, thank you. Going inside a cirrus cloud would actually be really, really cold. But as long as I had you know, some really good, um, really good equipment to keep me warm, that would be fine. Going inside a cumulus cloud would be really windy. Inside the cloud, there are these big updrafts and a cumulus cloud that is big enough actually has wind strong enough to carry hailstones. And you can get hailstones that are circulating. That's some really strong wind. Wait, 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 they're, they're soft and fluffy. 
aren't they? They look soft and fluffy, <laughs> but the reason that they are so big and a cumulonimbus cloud can get enormous, it's because of these powerful wind currents like billowing that out are into... bringing humid air in and then that humid air is condensing and you get these powerful currents that drive it. And sometimes on a cloudy day, you might see lots of different types of clouds all mixed together. But when clouds rain, and this is really cool. If, if you ever see it raining when there's just one spot where it's raining down, you'll notice it's a little bit lighter right where that rain spout is pouring down. And that's because the cloud is actually losing volume. So all of the water that's coming down in rain came from the cloud, right? So the cloud kind of shrinks as it rains. Wait, so it's the cloud itself is falling to the ground so there's less of it, and that's why you're able to see up through it. Yeah. And okay. Th and the reason that storm clouds are dark is because the water's about to drop. Well, the reason storm clouds are dark is because of how big they are. So the bigger the cloud, the less light you have coming through. And if you see a really dark cloud, that means that there are probably tens of thousands of feet above that darkness that you see that is all cloud. To really, Ooh. to really appreciate rain from clouds. I think this this video helps quite a bit. So watch, we're gonna play this a couple times. Watch as this rain just pours <laughs> out of the cloud. It really does look like there's a huge pitcher of water and someone is just dumping it down. But as it comes through a second time, watch the bottom of the cloud, see how dark it is. And then as that rain starts pouring out, see how it looks a bit lighter, the light kind of changes. Now, now, what are we seeing is sped up? This right? is a time lapse. Okay. So yes, you're seeing you're seeing probably um, a half hour that's condensed down into just a few seconds as this storm moves across. <laughs> but I think this is a great example of rain and how rain comes from clouds. And the fact that you can you can see both rain and clouds, you can see them because they're made of liquid water. They're made of water droplets. And Math Dad, do you remember? The name for when water changes from a gas into a liquid? Um, the gas to a liquid is condensing. That's right. And this cycle that we have on Earth of clouds forming and then rain falling, we call it the water cycle. And we came up with a fun, easy little song to the tune of La Cucaracha. So yeah. real quick, if you want to go to page 12 in the notes, I believe. Nope, page 14. Page 14 in the notes. Here is how this works. Right. So you get your hands ready to go like this, and this represents evaporation, yeah. water turning from a gas, from sorry, from a liquid into a gas. Evaporation, condensation, precipitations when it rains. The water goes round from earth to wet ground. That's the water cycle song. All right, one more time. Okay. Evaporation, condensation, precipitations when it rains. The water goes round from cloud to wet ground. That's the water cycle song. So from ocean to clouds and then down to the ground, water is always cycling around in our planet. And that water cycle is an extremely important part of weather. And so to label these arrows, where would we want to put evaporation? Okay, so evaporation was from a liquid to a gas. So that's... This one here? Yep, that is that one right there. And evaporation is something that you're going to have a lot of over the oceans and, and and near a lake too. You might have heard of the lake effect, which we'll talk about a little mm. more when we talk about weather. That is evaporation. And then condensation is clouds forming. Condensation. Got it. Yep. And, and precipitation is raining. Got it. There we go. All right, let's let's go back to um, real quick. I just want to point out again, you guys saw this difference, but this is the most important thing to under, understand about clouds in my opinion, is the difference between a water droplet and a raindrop. So you saw that huge paper that I held up that was raindrop size, and then this little dot on my thumb is a water droplet size. That's why. Wait, wait, this big circle right here is the size of an actual, Water drop. Well, if we blew up well, yeah, if, these if, tiny if we, ones. But relative to this. Relative. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So when we say water droplets are smaller than raindrops, we mean a lot smaller. Okay. A droplet is a want to be, wannabe drop. Like 
someday I'll grow up and be a, a real drop. Yeah, and once I combine with a million others, yeah. then I'll be a raindrop <laughs> and be heavy enough to fly. Cool. And then on this page, we talked about we talked about these four different, three different types of clouds, stratus clouds. Those are these layer ones. And if it's a nimbostratus cloud, then it's raining. Cumulo cumulus clouds are big and fluffy. And if they get really big, then they can be a cumulonimbus cloud that will form lightning and thunder mm. and drop rain or even hail. Okay. And the cumulonimbus clouds can actually be as high as the troposphere. They can be enormous. Cirrus clouds, thin and wispy. And then alto means high. And the, the clouds that are in this middle layer of our atmosphere, sometimes we call alto cirrus or alto cumulus. For being extra high. Okay, you, you named some Latin words earlier. Okay, and I just wanted to see if we can decipher these because these are hard. Okay, real quick math, Dad, but we want to make sure we have time for our polls. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. All right, so the name of clouds come from Latin root words. In Latin, some word means rain. Which of these is it? Stratus, cumulus, nimbo, alto, cirrus. One of them means nimbo. Rain. Nimbo. And I'm seeing several people in the chat saying nimbo. Good job, you guys. Nimbo so means nimb rain. Nimbus cloud. Yep, or nimbus. Okay. What about heap or pile? So is that cumulus? Like you accumulate a bunch of stuff? Yes. Oh. Cumulo. And that's a good way to think it. Accumulate. Cumulo is to heap or pile. Okay. And then extend spread out or or uh, cover with a layer so layers i'm thinking like strata yep so stratus strata. okay yep. stratus okay what about high or tall you just told us that one alto was, i thought like, alto is seeing the lower part so I, that, that one's confusing to me so it should be soprano sorry no okay <laughs> all right and then the last one, just by a process of elimination, it's got to be cirrus, means a lock of hair or like horse hair. Yep. Oh, yeah. And if you look at this, that totally looks it like... It kind of does look like someone put hair across the sky. Got it. Now, let's let's head back to our main view. And I want to answer a couple excellent questions before we do our mystery, why in the world mystery, and our polls. Um, do clouds cause tornadoes? And is a hurricane just a really big cloud? We have a whole entire class on severe storms, hurricanes, and tornadoes. We'll talk more about in the, uh, in the future, but you definitely do need big clouds to be able to produce either hurricanes or tornadoes. And is there a different between fog difference between fog and mist from Isabel? Mm. Um, fog is definitely, you know, I'm not sure of what the scientific de definition is for mist. I would have to look that up. But a fog really is a cloud at ground level. That's what fog is. Yeah, I would think a, a mist could be just a anything that's a slightly hazy whether or not it's a cloud or yeah and a great question from aaron when a plane flies through a cloud why doesn't it destroy the cloud if it was a very very small cloud like about as big as this cloud in a bottle then when a plane flew through it it would definitely scatter out those droplets to be so small that we wouldn't really see them anymore you have to have a lot of droplets together to be able to see it um but uh, most clouds are so big that the planes flying through them don't really make a difference do they get wet? Do, do like or if cars drive through fog? Are they getting wet? Sometimes, yes. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Great questions. All right, we will do our where in the world mystery and our polls, and then we will come back and answer a few more questions. Are you ready for this, Math Dad? I'm ready for the where in the world mystery. Okay. So, so several hundred terraces keep this place from sliding down the mountain. Incas built it around 1450 AD, and no one knows why they left. Ooh. Where in the world is this place? Boy, so it's got to be Central or South America. Um, 1450, I mean, that's a lot later than... And I want to give a quick thank you to yeah. Kara, who looked up the definition of mist. And it sounds like mist is just a f fog that is more spread out. So you have better visibility. You can see farther in mist than you can in fog. Okay. But they're made by the same thing. And uh, minor I, master has it, Machu Picchu. Ooh, nicely done, uh, Coaster Cody. I see. Yes, Machu Picchu is our where in the world mystery location for today. It is located in Peru, and it was built so long ago, and then it disappeared from human knowledge for quite a while before it was rediscovered. It is an incredible ancient city that was built on the mountain top, and is just a beautiful, beautiful ancient ruin. And now, 
If you will go to itempool.com slash science mom slash live, we are ready with poll questions. All right. And keep the great um, questions coming in. in our moderators are, full, are sending us questions and we're seeing some great ones. And I saw someone ask, um, why are clouds white? And that is a great question. It has to do with how light reflects off those water droplets and the way that the way that the light is absorbed and then reflects off is why they're white. All right, thanks, All right. Mom here. So what is the word for when water changes from a oops, from a gas to a liquid? Starting off with an easy one. I don't know. They're just gonna be thinking about cockroaches. <laughs> Nope, but they totally know this la, one. La cucaracha is the, is the Spanish word for cockroach. So is it evaporation, condensation, precipitation, or sublimation? Is it, it could be boiling, melting, freezing? What is the word? For when water changes from a gas to a liquid. Ooh, so I, I, I wrote this question with water, but would this work for any substance? Would, mm -hmm. the, would the, the answer would be the same? Yep, this is the word for any time you have something change from a gas into a liquid. Okay. But water is definitely what we see the most. All right. Looks like we have a winner. Condensation is the correct answer. Good and job. that is what the chat said. All right. They got that one, Science Mom. They did. They got that one right. Yeah. Good but job, you, you guys. You got to give them the easier warm up problem. Build up their confidence, and then you break them down. <laughs> All right. What word comes from the Latin word for rain? Is it cumulo, zero, stratus? Nimbus, <sighs> what which, is it? Which one means name means rain. So if you see this or part of this word in a cloud name, you know it's a cloud that produces rain. Mm -hmm. They've totally got this one, Math Dad. Look at that. Uh, You're getting bit. punched in the head by the bar. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> duck, got to duck down. Oh. Let's go ahead and finish and reveal. The answer is Nimbus, and that is correct. Good job, you guys. And again, if you're watching the replay, um, you can just answer out loud in your head if you would like, if you're not able to get onto item pool. All right. On any given day, almost 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by clouds, true or false? That is quite a bit of Earth's surface to be covered by clouds. That is, that is a lot. Yeah. Seems like you wouldn't need, wait. So from way up high, if, if, we, if I turn around and look at this, so you can see the clouds from space, but from the moon, can you see the clouds? Oh yeah. If you look at, at real images from Earth that were taken from space, you see a lot of white. Yeah. And you, you can see the clouds and they do look white. That's really interesting. True is correct. Wow, 70%. They totally got this one, Math Dad. I hope you have some harder questions. Otherwise you're going down. All right, well I saved the harder ones for last science mom. Here, here's where they crash and burn. All right. So the average cumulus cloud weighs more than a million pounds. Is that true or false? A million pounds is a lot. I mean, clouds are kind of big, but a million pounds, I think we all know what would happen if a million pound weight were in the sky, it would crash to the ground. So I don't know, uh, yeah. Let's, are you trying to, I, I don't know. to I, mislead them? No, 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 I'm, we'll, we'll see what they know here. All right, let's finish and reveal. They say true, and the answer is true. It is true. true. How so is that true? Think about it. If you have a cloud that comes and rains all over your city, and let's say your city is pretty big, 20 square miles, and it dumps five inches of rain, oh, right. then just do the math and think to yourself, okay, five inches of rain, rain five inches deep over 20 square miles? Well, that'd be way more than a million pounds. That'd be way but... more than a million pounds. Yeah, so, so even if we got just a half an inch of rain, that, that would probably be over a million pounds. Yeah. yeah. And wow. Cumulus clouds, those big white fluffy clouds, they do have a lot of water in them, a lot of liquid water. The average one, in fact, does weigh more than a million pounds. And a huge one that's going to produce tornadoes or a massive rainstorm, that one would weigh even more. All right, all right. They, they got lucky on that one. But here's the one that is for sure going to stump Ooh. them because I don't think we talked about this one. All we, right. We didn't talk about this one. This one, this one is... I really like this question. I'll explain why as soon as, as, soon as we right. finish. So just take your best guess. So true, this is true a, or false, over 100 lightning bolts strike the earth every second. It's a best guess question. Just take yeah. your best guess. So, I mean, Earth's a big place, lots of storms, but 100 strikes per second is an awful lot. It is. I mean, 
not much that takes place a hundred times per second. So, hmm. Go ahead and finish and reveal. They said true. Now let's go back to our main view and Math Dad, you can do your victory dance real fast while I explain this one. The reason I put this one in here is because if you if you do a quick Google search for how many lightning bolts strike the earth per second, the first number that comes up is 100 bolts per second. And the reason why is because back in the 1920s, there was a survey done by a couple scientists and they said, okay, let's look at how many thunderstorms on average how many lightning strikes per thunderstorm on average? And they said, oh, I think about 100 bolts per second. But now with satellites tracking weather all over the earth at the same time, because we have so many satellites, scientists studied that question again and they got a much better reading. And it turns out that it's 40 strikes per second, which is still a lot of lightning. But 40 strikes per second is a lot less than 100 strikes per second. But if you are looking through the internet and you don't check the source because that number is an older number and has been around for quite a while and because it often gets pulled and repeated in little lists like, you know, 10 cool facts about weather, you will find that number to be a pretty common number. But if you try and track back the source, you can see that a study that was done just based on some estimating in the 1920s is not going to be nearly as accurate as a study done now with satellite data. So 40 strikes per second is actually the correct I mean, amount. I think that's interesting though. This is just because somebody says a number, then others start repeating it. Then it's really hard to get people to forget about it. Yeah. 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 And, Some, sometimes we have misinformation that kind of percolates down through just because people don't take the, the time to fact check. So if you see a list that says 10 cool facts about weather and it says a hundred lightning strikes per second, you can say, uh, 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 that's the old study. The new study says 40 strikes per second and is much more accurate. And um, if, if you guys have not yet seen the lightningmaps.org, um, it is an amazing website. I just typed it into the chat where you can actually see which lightning strikes are happening where in the world right now in real time. So we wait until we have a thunderstorm, a lightning storm, a rainstorm, and we go to this website and you can see, oh look, there was a strike just four miles away. And then it even shows the sound, the sound wave. wave going out. And sure enough, we hear thunder when the sound wave hits our house. So yeah, I totally recommend going to that website anytime there's a storm just to watch it. Cause it's so cool to see those lightning strikes. And then when you see how many lightning strikes a single storm has, then you start thinking, wow, the world's a big place. Maybe there could be 40 per second. There, there really are just about that many. All right, I'm gonna answer just a couple more questions real quick before we wrap up. So, um, is it possible to make a cloud that rains? Isabel asks, and that's a great question. It actually is possible to do something called cloud seeding. And there were some experiments a few decades ago where scientists flew up into the atmosphere and they released essentially artificial dust to try and see, can we make more clouds by releasing this artificial dust into the atmosphere. And they could make more clouds, but making clouds that actually rained proved to be a lot more difficult. It's a little more complex than that. Oh. And then there were concerns too about the type of pollution that would be produced by putting these artificial you know, chemicals up in the atmosphere. And other scientists said, this is a bad idea, don't do it. Um, another question from um, Amaya, could you make a cloud that created thunder? Clouds that create thunder and are thunderstorms, and we'll talk about this more when we talk about severe storms and weather, they have to be really big. And I don't think right now with our technology, it would not be at all possible for us to create a cloud big enough to produce a thunderstorm. But it's a matter of size. Once a cloud gets big enough, and once you have the right type of wind inside the cloud, then if the cloud's large enough, you build up charge, and that difference in charge between the cloud and the ground, that's what produces lightning. Good question. So, so do most rainstorms have lightning then? N I don't know if I would say most. Nimbo stratus clouds typically don't have thunder and lightning. It's the cumulostratus clouds, the really big ones that will produce lightning and thunder. But if the cloud is C big enough. Cumulonimbus. Cumulonimbus, thank yeah. you. If the cloud is big enough, yes, it will produce lightning and thunder. And then one more question, great question from Rory. What makes clouds appear to be different colors during sunsets? And we will talk about this more in a future class, 
But the short answer is that it has to do with how much air the light is traveling through and the way that light is absorbed and reflected. And we'll, we'll talk about this more in a future class. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed learning more about clouds. And we have one quick happy birthday shout out to Izzy from Omaha, who turned 10 on January 24th. And if you emailed us with a birthday shout out and we're expecting one today, we misplaced our notebook. So we will have, we couldn't extra, find it. We will have extra birthday shout outs on Wednesday. Work hard, grow smart, you guys, and we will see you soon. Bye.